The Oasis Podcast Live is back. We are coming to Manchester on the 11th of December, FAC 251, featuring the Oasis tribute band, Oasis Supernova, YouTube sensation James Hargreaves debuting his new band, plus special guests, exhibitions, competitions and more. Get your tickets right now, eventbrite.co.uk, or hit the link in the description below. All right, it's me, and I want to thank everyone at the Oasis Podcast, as you were. Yeah, but welcome to the Oasis podcast. Are we all right to call you Digsy or is it Pete? Yeah, or... yes, of course. That's what I'm known as. Yeah, that is you. And yeah, there's a. I think there might even be a song called something like that. I don't. I don't know. I've met... I think the years and it's a shit one of that. <laughs> it's not. You've said this. In... <laughs> You've said this in interviews before. It's rubbish. It's a brilliant song. Oh, I like that. I think it's the worst song you've ever written. <laughs> oh. Richard, Ash- Richard Ashcroft got cast, cast no shit. I don't want to get that. No. <laughs> Mate, that is a bloody. Mate, that is a bloody. I love. Well, look, you know, you can the merits of it or whatever, but you know, the. the... Well, it, it's it's basically it was already the song was already written. Yeah. Um, and no one ever had the title for it. Yeah. And we were down at the real people's studio one night, and we were all just jamming, and I farted. And I'm sick of on the mic. Guess what I had for me tea? It was lasagna, lasagna, <laughs> and he's playing it away on the drums, laughing his head off, and then the next day he phoned and said. What was that? Were you singing last night? I said, I was on Oliver. Just made it up on the, on, on the spot. He went, well, I've got a song. He said, so I'm going to call it Jiggy's Dinner. There we go. That's spot on. But, but, and as well, it's got that great line, hasn't it? These could be the best years of our yeah, lives, which is... Yeah, a bit of it like... That is special. Right. That's one of the things I love about Definitely Maybe and, and the B-sides is... The, and it's definitely the, what you guys... What your um, music's had over the years as well is there's that humour... You know, there's humour in it, and there's, you know, yeah. like you don't get Coldplay or, or Radiohead singing about having a lasagna. You know what I mean? It's no. just, well, you... I think that's what we, like, one of the first things why we, you know, we got on so well. I think, you know, we, we basically all had that, you know, same sense of humour type of thing. You know? Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, mate. Well, what's well, we've got that out of the way, so that's good. That's done. <laughs> Sorted. Um, what you, what's going on with you at the moment, mate? Yeah. Already, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've done my yeah, research. Um, I mean, we were due to record our third album, but our guitarist, unfortunately, he passed away last year. Yeah. Uh, Big Lee Watson. He'd been with me about twenty years. Um, so we've got, we've got, we're doing a big memorial night. Us, the real people, um, Dave McCabe. Um, yeah. There's like just loads of people in New Orleans. So we're, we're doing a big memorial night for them in uh, the third of November, yeah. which is already sold out. All right. Uh, um, we have a new guitarist, and so we're just basically uh, getting ready to start recording this next uh, next, next album. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, no, and I'm good. playing I'm playing in Glasgow on Saturday with the real people. I'm supporting doing an acoustic set with them. I'm supporting them in there uh, up in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. I just spoke to Chris actually because he's um, he's agreed to come on as well, and I, and he said that he was. Uh, yeah, just getting ready for Glasgow and then maybe give him a call, give it a couple of days because he's expecting it to be a quite heavy one in Glasgow, so he might have oh, to do a cover on the one. Well, then my cousin's auntie, so every time we do get together, it ends up being a bit uh, messy, like. Bit busy. But you, um, so you, uh, do you st- do you see him quite a lot? Do you kind of, uh, or is it just tends to be with the music or do you pop around each other's house for a cup of tea and stuff? The, 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 the real people's? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see them most weekends, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. All right, that's good. I'll probably, in fact, I'll probably be seeing them tomorrow and then we'll drive up to Glasgow on Saturday. Yeah, fair play, man, fair play. Well, have a good gig. I hope that all goes all right. And yeah. and I was going to say about the memorial show because I saw that advertised, and but but it's all sold out anyway, so... It's all sold out now, yeah. Plus, we're, um, we're doing the Shine Festival. A smaller, they're getting back together just for this one gig in... Um, it's Butlins in my... It's called the Shine Festival. It's all, yeah. the, all the bands from the 90s. Yeah. Um, in November. So we're, we're, we're going to be getting back together just for, just for, that, just for that gig, like... Yeah, I saw all, that. Cause I think all the cause, original members. Cause they, so it's the original members of Smaller, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, good. Oh, that's interesting. Because you've got, um, I know it's Chris Mullin is, is your main guy now in the sums, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But then he also plays with Hurricane Number no. 1 now as well, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, so he's helping the, um, Alex out from Hurricane yeah. No. 1. I, I think they're on, they're on the same bill as well, so it'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all a bit incestuous. going to boo them and they can go and boo us. <laughs> all a bit incestuous, all a bit jumping around. <laughs> Yeah. No, well I love I mean I I've I'm a big fan of your stuff anyway. I mean smaller, you know, and I've I'll um I'll pull it out but I've had a I put it out there on um Twitter if we had questions for you and a couple of people have come back and said, Oh just no question but just tell Dixie that, that um that badly badly album from Smaller was just fantastic and just didn't get the didn't get the, the respect it deserved in the nineties because Oh it, nice one mate, yeah. yeah. Sounds cool. But no, it was I mean it's a great album. I'm, I've been like really enjoyed your stuff with the sums as well. And like yeah. I saying about the humour in Oasis, I think that so much of your music has just got this very biting, clever, like, uh, humour to it that's, you know, just little plays on words or you, you start an expectation in a line and then you just change it and I love that. I love humour in music. I, I think it's just, I have a very short attention span, so, you know, like, sort of, <laughs> I did that or I'm basically ticked, you know what I mean? I can't be, I can't be out thinking anymore, I'll just put that in. Yeah, but even, <laughs> but even stuff like, you know, you would drop in little samples of things or like I know in the last album you just go into a bit of I Want to Be Your Man by by the Beatles and stuff and you yeah, just, yeah. it's just good, just mixes it up a little bit and, and it is, I think in, in music often people take it far too seriously. And, and well, like, and I, think, I think Noel's done that a, a, a few times in, in his songs, but um, I've always done I mean, it's, it's like... If you if you sort of the melody is very similar to something that's inspired, yeah, you make lots of shoes the melody as well to show you know, to show me how long that's that came from. It's like they say, isn't it? Genius, what is it? Genius steals. Oh, I've lost the phrase now, but yeah. <laughs> well, if you're going to love any, it's not from the best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fair play. But I mean, growing up in um, in Liverpool, as you did, were the Beatles a big part of your life growing up? Yeah, still are, I suppose. Yeah, you yeah. can't get away from them, in, in, especially in, the, in this city. Like. Yeah, but it's funny, I've got... Um, I've got uh, my my wife's family's from Liverpool, and it feels like there's a bit more of a love hate for the Beatles in Liverpool. Like some members of the family absolutely love them and worship them, and then some are actually quite down on them. I suppose because they left, you know, they left and buggered off to London. Well, I think. Well, I, I mean, I always say. A, bit, a, lot of, a lot of people say, you know, Liverpool made the Beatles, and and, and you know, I disagree. I think the Beatles would have came from Pontefract or Timbuktu. Hmm. Still would have been the Beatles, you know. Yeah. So it doesn't make a band. It's just that they were, you know, they happened to just be born in our city, and, and mm. you know, I don't think they influenced the, the music at all. I don't know, man. I mean, I think that the obviously with Liverpool, but you know, I'm a big Beatles kind of obsessive, you know. But so I've I've read everything there is to read on them. But like, yeah. you know, I think the big thing with the with the Beatles was that it was the the fact it was a port city and they could get hold of all these all these records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, and the fact that they, you know, coming from I know that actually they weren't really that working class. I mean, they were fair, you know, they can play that up. I think they're relatively. Decent backgrounds, weren't they? But but they were. Um... Yeah, do I, do I think there was only Ringo really. I mean, all the others from, from uh, they were from the south of Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so so they weren't. But but I think that they really did feel an affinity to the like the American R and B artists and stuff. That that. Oh yeah, yeah, and the, and the Motown. Uh, imp- but I mean, it was just uh, they were they were a mismatch of everything, like and yeah, done it barely, barely, really. I mean, yeah. you know, they set, they set, they set the, the standard, didn't they? I suppose for songwriting and stuff and experimentation. <laughs>
So was it the Beatles when you were growing up? Were you big into music when you were a kid? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I think it was mainly, you know, I mean, me, me, me granddad played band. I mean, that, that for Cinderella people, that, that we shared the same granddad. So our granddad played banjo. Then the real people's father, my uncle Wally, he, he was he played guitar and he played at bands in the sixties. And my mum, my dad went away to sea all all the time because he was in he was chief steward the major navy. So my mum would go out on gigs with my uncle Wally, that's and, and me and Chris's dad, mm-hmm. and and sing with them because she she sang. So we were always sort of brought up, you know, with guitars and singing and stuff like that. Yeah. No, that's great. And what, what about, did you have posters on your walls as you were a kid? Oh, no, I was just into Mark Bolan. Mark Bolan, yeah. Mark Bolan, Slade, all the 70s, got him rock stuff. Yeah, yeah, fair play. And then what about you getting into music? I know you were in the, um, you were in a band that, that had quite a bit of success in the 80s, weren't you, that cooked the books? Yeah, I was in a band called Cook the Books, and we had like a number one in France. Yeah. Which is crazy about that. I've, I've watched a couple of other interviews with you, and that's just that's just sort of mad how that came about, wasn't it? That you were very kind of political, um, and yet... And yeah, well, and, we, we had two lead singers. I, I sang, and uh, my uh, mate Owen, he, he sang as well, but some producer of some French... It was like a teenage movie, like love story type of thing, and it's, all, yeah. it's already been... It's called La Boom, but it's already been what uh, hit in... In Europe, they made a second film called The Boom 2. Bah alors, c'est pas fini? Je t'ai jamais dit ça avec toi, c'est où on se couche ou on se plaque? Bah oui! Tu me passes un coup de fil? Olivier, mon numéro. Vous voulez ce type? Bah, me draguer, qu'est-ce que tu crois? Tu sais qui c'est, Félix? Mais non! C'est un homme! Ok, au revoir. Il a quel âge, ce Félix? C'est lui. Oh, vas-y, puis tu me diras comment il est habillé. Mais il y a quelque temps, tu aurais été désespéré. Comment tu sais Tu me dis plus rien, alors je te vis. Vic, je t'aime. It's so weird because your your other stuff like the um, <laughs> it's very that. political and then you've got all this like crooning uh, <laughs> it's weird <laughs> isn't it? With makeup on them, fucking singing la la la, fucking we love you. <laughs> but you were happy to just go, yep, fine, great. Who who well, turned yeah, on that? Well, yeah, because I mean we were able to sort of with with because it was number one in a couple of countries and stuff like that and uh, we were able to set up our own our own uh, recording studio. Brilliant. In Liverpool, you know, so we we had somewhere to. Rec- Records and yeah, and we set up our own uh, independent label for for one of the records. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. It's great that you had that opportunity, really, and then you live that pop star lifestyle, but in France. <laughs> like... That's it. Yeah, come back home. You're booking back on the fucking zone. No one knows it. <laughs> <laughs> like today, actually. <laughs> it's just kind of amazing. But did you ever? Did you like learn French? Did you base yourselves over there for a bit? No, no, no. We were just sort of we went over to film the movie, and then we were. Just, Flew back over there every now and then to promote it on television shows and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I can not talk in French. Can I have accents on us? <laughs> hey la, hey la la la. <laughs> And, la, la, la. and I was looking it up, but it's actually got um, Sophie Marceau in it in a very young role. Yeah, she went on to be right, in a yeah, Bond film, in didn't she? She went on to be in a Bond, a Bond girl. That's right, yeah. 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 Yeah, but there you go. That's cool. Good. And then, I mean, it's a big jump then from from the the sound of, um, you know, I, I saying it in my posh South voice. Cook the books doesn't sound as good. <laughs> you got to say cook the books, haven't you? You've got to yeah, cook the books. Cook the books. Um, yeah. But then the big the jump to then to smaller, which is you go straight into, you know, that I love the sound of that that smaller um, album, you know, and it's it's got such that great rip hop sound. Obviously, Noel plays guitar on on the track. Um, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah.
But what I like about that, though, is it doesn't feel like, you know, in some things you get a guest on and, and it's, you know, if it had been bloody Slash or something, it would have sounded completely out of place. But it doesn't, you know, it, it sounds very much in tune with the rest of the album. Oh, absolutely. Well, we, well I mean, no was always at our gigs anyway, do you know what I mean? He, 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 he actually fucking, well, he, he said that was one of his top ten favourite albums and stuff, so. I saw that. That I was only a couple always, of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, because we used to go and do gigs with them and they do the same with us, it was like, you know, we were like, basically you know, just two guitar bands. Yeah. You know, so it was like, I still got it. He gave me a guitar and, uh, when he first got signed, an Epiphone, um, a Les, Epiphone Les Paul. Yeah. When he first got signed, he bought himself that. Alan McGee gave him a grand. <laughs> to tie him over and he, and he bought himself a guitar for 500 quid. I think he bought fucking Liam a mic stand. <laughs> Tony McCallum's uh, uh, drumsticks, with his uh, bass strings. But uh, I've got that. Uh, he gave me the guitar. I've still got the guitar. And Christie's offered me about six grand for it years and years ago. Oh wow! You know, at an auction. Yeah. And when, I was a bit skimp one time, and I thought, oh, do you know what? So I, um, I asked him for. I need a letter, you know, the authenticity to say this is the yeah. guitar and blah blah. Just from him, yeah. And. I got the letter, but uh, the, man, the manager said, uh, he said, he, uh, whatever you've been offered for it, he, he'll, he'll give you the money for it, but he thought you would have kept it in the spirit that was given. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> you know, you like, felt really bad. So, so I've still got it. It's, 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 it's upstairs in my bedroom. I've still got the guitar. I'm never going to sell it. Oh, fair enough, mate. Well, I was going to say, I know a couple of collectors... if the price goes up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, there's a couple of collectors that, that um, I know would probably just be... To quickly jump in to phone you up after that because you know we've there is I think it's well, well do you know what after saying that I'm open to offers you're open to offers <laughs> fair enough fair enough but no it's um I mean when did you first meet obviously the, the 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 real people guys were you know obviously it's your cousins you knew them from what childhood I take it but but yeah but what about Oasis when did you first um when did you first meet uh, Noel and the other guys um, I met them the real people were signed to, um, I think it was Columbia at the time, also, but they had their own, I'm just putting a pasty in the oven here, hang on. Go for it, mate. Good job I'm not doing fucking lasagna. <laughs> um, I met them at, at their studio, they were, they, were, they were recording their first demos. Uh, Hello. Hello, mate. Sorry, I lost you there. I know, yeah. I just wonder what happened. I just put my pasty in the oven and the, 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 the phone went off. <laughs> right. Don't put your phone in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. You were saying that the real people were doing their demos. Oh, that, yeah. So that, that's where they met them in, 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 their, in their studio. So then they, um, we used to go to Manchester and, and play the, like, the, the likes of the boardwalk and some little venues with them. And they'd come to the pool and, and, and reciprocate, you know what I mean? Yeah. And do little gigs with us. Yeah. And did you think at the time that this, this is like these guys are special, or were they just? Sort I, did, of... I did actually, and I've, I've never ever ever seen a band since. You know, like I don't know, just, just, just you, you know, they've got something, but you can't, you don't really know what it is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like it was, it was just it was the purity, I think, of, of, of the straight rock and roll. You know, it was it was like. No, the chords were straight out of a song, you know, the, the, the guitar the chord book, you know, there yeah. were, were no, like, sort of flares about them or in, mm. invasions or anything like that. It was just like a breath of fresh air, I suppose. Yeah, well, just because it was so simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair and enough. And Liam being Liam, I mean, you know, you couldn't take your eyes, eyes off him, man, but he never done that. He just stood there with his hands behind his back. Yeah. Just singing, you know what I mean? But it's like he had that. That little order about them, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that, that they were, um, you know, that they, they got on so well with you and the real people, because was there never any Manchester-Liverpool divide, or was that always just cool? Well, I think, no, not, well, yes, it was, especially in football and stuff like that, and even in the 80s, there was like, the likes of, like, the Bunny Men and, uh, and say, New Order, or, you know, you know, I mean, bands always had that sort of competitive spirit and stuff, but I think... Oasis seems to have, like, brought to, 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 like, maybe calmed all that down. It was like, they, they brought Manchester and Liverpool together because they'd love coming to Liverpool. They, they got on with Scousers. Of course, yeah. And I think a, a lot of Oasis fans and them, they became sort of warm to it, you know. They, basically, 
if you haven't got music, you, you know what I mean? It's to, mm. to bring things together, then what have you got? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and I mean, the balls of them as well for a Manchester band to cover yeah. I'm the Walrus, right? Them scousers are going to come on stage and do a little song with us. I mean, a Liverpool band maybe even wouldn't even do it because, because you know, it, it just would be not seen as not the right thing. But, but yeah. But... Oh no, that's it. That, that, I think um, it, it worked in their favour because it, I mean, a lot of fucking uh, scousers walked to it. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. a big sort of like a tribute, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. And what about the other guys? I mean, so it was was it Noel particularly that you got on best with? Yeah, yeah, and I was always like sort of bit Noel, I suppose. Only between through like sort of love of, of like songwriters and yeah. you know, Bert Bacharach and stuff like that. I and mean, we were always yapping and just the, we, I was into this like the Smiths and stuff and it was that like affinity, I suppose. We had, we, we had more or less like the same type of music and I'd go to this flat and he'd definitely this and vice versa. Mm. No, fair play. And I mean, what part of the I, I interviewed Tony McCarroll on here, and he we spent a lot of time sort of talking about how important the the realies were to yeah. that early Oasis sound. I mean, I don't think that's I don't think they get enough of the respect. I think the people that know know. But yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah, I mean, at, about, at the time, I mean, I suppose, I mean, we we just got signed to Better Records, and that, that was all through Creation, because Tim Abbott was like he he, he worked at Creation. Yeah. Um. And then they went. No one ever really give give, give them um, the credit, especially on a couple of the songs which are, are Christopher had written. Yeah. Um, and that's all. That's all. It wasn't was the name underneath the song. You know, it wasn't like any anything really big. But the... hello. Hello, mate. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Am I boring you or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't what know what it is. Said? It just keeps cutting out. I don't know. But, um... But I, I, I don't think it's... Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, um, we? So, yeah, so we were just talking about the real, the realies that, you know, it, they just really wanted to get that credit, really, that, you know, because yeah, they... they basically, had... yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Lee, I think Liam, um, give them, they give them a good mention a few months back or something, I believe, on a tweet or something. He did. I think he was... It's him pretty pissed, and he was on Twitter, and he was just sort of saying how important their stuff was, and... You know, it's yeah, and, Tony, and, and Tony's always, always been a big fan of the real people, Tony McCarroll. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the one the one that's crazy. So so they do get a credit on um, Rocking Chair, you know. So so they are co-credited as writers on Rocking Chair, yeah. which is good. And I think Liam's even talked about playing that live when he um, when he tours again. So so actually that, oh, yeah. that might be that might be good for them. But um, I mean, I, I can see Liam actually uh, collaborating with them next year. I think. Yeah. But I think it'd be a good move for him because I mean, you know, obviously the, the real people have a big influence on him anyway, and they've got some great songs. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, and, and they do. You know, that's what they've been doing over the past few years is, is collaborating with other artists and stuff like that. They've got their own recording studio over in, in Birkenhead over the water. So, I mean, I'd like to see it actually them them, them uh, collaborating with Liam. Yeah, no, I think it'd be great. I mean, that's yeah. one of the things that we were talking about on another episode was, you know, I don't know if you've... Have you heard Liam's album yet? I've heard, I've heard um, all the singles and stuff. I've not actually played the album in full, but I've, I've, I've heard of I've really liked it. I'm glad, I'm glad his voice is back. Yeah. Because his voice was going terrible towards the end of Oasis. It was just yeah. terrible, but... Yeah. I made up his voice, come back. Yeah, no, it is, it is good. I mean, but one of the things we were saying is, is they've obviously gone for, like, um, getting these top songwriters in, you know, the guy that worked with Adele and other people. Oh, and, yeah. And so... And but, the, the fellow out of Cherry Ghost, is it, as well? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, he's, he's a great songwriter. Yeah, so, so he's worked with good people, but we were sort of saying... Well, wouldn't it have been great if he did a track with, like, the real people? A track with Ashcroft? A track with, you know, just go back to... A track with you, you know, just go yeah, back and get... Yeah, Oh, mate, I'd, I'd, I'd jump for the chance. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. it'd just be good, I think, to get... Because as much as I, you know... You know, that the new album is great, but it's just lacking something that it just doesn't quite have that Oasis sound. It's a bit more no. studio... It feels a bit more studio aimed for a big mass market rather than that rock and roll sound that we want. Yeah, he'll have to, uh, it's, well, if he wants that, he'll have to come back up north for them, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and did you hear when Peter... Come, come back up north and then take us to Los Angeles and we'll do it there. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Fly you over for a few weeks, but... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no fair play, mate. But but with smaller as well. I mean, I've heard that the um, the second smaller album is sat there unreleased somewhere. What's going on? Well, what's um, we we got halfway through um, the second album and the the, uh, the record company they they went uh, into liquidation. Right. Uh, they just basically got out of money, so the album was shelved um, and left, and then. Mark Coyle who produced it, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mark. Well, he he, he was at he was at recording at the same studio. He was down in Lincolnshire with this other band, and the, and the, the the boss of the, the studio said, "What's happened to Smaller?" He said, "Well, they, um, they, they ran out of money and like like split up and type of thing." Um, and he said, "Yeah, what's that? He's the masters, and he, he, he gave me the masters." Yeah. It, it was always about sixteen grand or something like that. We we paid like half the bubble. And uh, he gave us the masters, so I had the masters for for, for ages, because they were they were all on two in tape. Right. Um. And then there was a studio in Liverpool who who, who, who had just got a two inch recording uh, machine, but they didn't have tape. And I said, well, listen, if I give you this tape, we we'll uh, we'll put dump all all the all the recording into 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 the computer. Yeah. And then you can have the tape and record over it for studio time, and that's what we did. And then the, um, the hard drive, um, what, what the album got put into, that was blocked or something, and no one could get it, could get it out. Now, my, my brother, uh, Stephen, has just found a company in London that can um, salvage it all. Okay. Um, and the guitarist, that's on Liam Gallagher's band, he's, he's a scouser, or he's from over the water. I don't know the lad's name, but he... he, he, he Apparently he led to some effects pedals to record this album. Um, he wants to mix it. Oh, great! Because that, because that's what he does. He's, he, he's got a studio down in London, and he's, he's worked with a lot of people. Uh, and he, he, he did the actual monitor mixes. And he said, if you can get that, and, and just give us the files, and said, I'd love to have a crack at mixing it. So that's the stage what we're, where we're at now. Oh, that'd be brilliant if if it's finally because because you had the same problem with the sums, didn't you? And that you had another oh, album. It's that... the story of my career, mate. <laughs> I mean, it just goes tits <laughs> off all the green time. Oh, I'm not very good at making money. I'm not very good. But you did manage to, the second Sums album went missing for a few years, but then you did manage to find it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how, that, 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 well, that's, that, that was the actual uh, demo. Okay. That we, that, that we, we, we um, give to the recording, the recording studio to record. We, we, we paid for studio time with, with them tapes yeah. of that second album. So it's all sort of, sadly, <laughs> interlinked, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like sort of by oh, mistake, okay. by default. Yeah, like yeah. my career. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But what I um, so I, I was listening to the uh, the the last um, Sums album the other day, and I completely forgot that Dave McCabe's on it. And that yeah, track, that's when, right, yeah. Oh man, his voice. I mean, you've got a you've got a good voice, Dixie. Don't get me wrong. But then when his voice kicks in, yeah. you just go, oh, what, what? You know, yeah. he needs to get back out there. And and I know he's been doing what writing and doing bits. Yeah, and he's been doing a solo album and um, stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's just like a record now at the moment, so oh, he's he? going to be doing this gig with us. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Um, it was funny as well because the song, the song that he sings on it, uh, it's called "I'm Not Very Good." Yeah. Right. <laughs> and the celebration of being shit. <laughs> right. But I, I went. I couldn't get to the studio for him to sing that singer's part like that. So <laughs> I was playing in town. And he comes in, I said, where have you been? He said, I've been singing on your album, you lazy bastard. <laughs> and then he phoned me the next day, he said, what's that song called? I went, I'm not very good. He went, you, are you bastard? <laughs> That's about right.
I do like that one. It's like I'm not very oh, good at doing the washing it's, up. It's, 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 we have the same range, I suppose, our voices, you know, like yeah. sort of. Yeah, but I really like, especially your voice. I mean, like we're saying about Liam's voice is is a bit knackered, but well, it was. But I think your voice has definitely changed over the years since smaller. But uh, when you hit those, when you hit the high notes and things, there's a real a lived-in quality to your voice, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. That's yeah. Button, I suppose. There's, you could tell there's, there's been a life lived when you're hitting those notes and singing, the, singing yeah, those words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the older. I'm a granddad now. You know what I mean? So like uh, the older. The other, I, I, I get I, I, the moral of singing. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's, it's a bit. If my mum sang, yeah, my daughter sings. You know, it's, you know, it's just in your isn't it? Yeah. No. I don't think you can learn how to sing. You know, everyone can learn how to play an instrument, but I don't think you, you, you can either sing or you can't. Basically, I think. Yeah, well, I think it's it's like it's not just about singing, is it? It's about having a voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, you know, like my one of my favourite singers of all time is Shane McGowan. Like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. But Shane McGowan is not the your classically trained bloody. Well, same baritone. thing. Because one, one of mine is Marky Smith, the fall. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's that noise that's that, that you know that you create that, that yeah. comes out your gob. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mate, absolutely. Good. I mean, just going back to the um, the Oasis side of it, Digsy, then, so you get the, you know, obviously you get the, the, the Digsy's dinner credit, which is very, which is very cool, I suppose, has followed you around for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've taught me to be great, that one. And then you get, also, you get mentioned again in Be Here Now, on the Be Here Now album. Oh, yeah, yeah. So your shit jokes remind me of Digsy's. And one of our, I can't get on to Twitter now to get it, but someone did say, um, I'll credit them afterwards, uh, can you tell us any shit jokes? Like, what was the, <laughs> what were these shit jokes that remind, that, that was obviously so memorable? I think what he actually means is that they just, uh, me songs. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's right. I, I mean, don't do jokes, I just do the reality. They're just, I just tell stories. They're, they're, they're not jokes, they're not fictitious. <laughs> And what was it? Right. And the other thing I like is you get mentioned in the um, I think it's the Definitely Maybe documentary that they put out with the, with the album, and you you're in oh, it quite yeah. a bit. I can't I can't even remember filming that. You know, I was I was pissed. <laughs> they sent a car for me. Oh yeah. In, in the morning to pick me up because they were still filming in Manchester and took me into, into into town. And the camera crew were delayed, so it was a bar by down by the Albert Dock. So they just said, "Yeah, you have to wait here." Yeah, it's, it's free, free bar. So me and my mate just got sozzled. <laughs> They didn't turn up until about five o'clock, and I was, I was rotten. <laughs> and it's horrible, you, you know, when you see it, though, I don't know if you've ever heard or seen yourself when you're pissed. It's like, you know, you cringe, oh no, it's not what I'm actually like. He's a funny, funny fella, Chaos. I'm just there to fucking take the drugs and fucking drink all that ale. Brilliant. He's a brilliant fabulous songwriter. singer, songwriter, amazing. But he sings these, uh, these songs with possibly the most offensive, vicious lyrics about kids and women and fucking his mates and his next door night, he fucking hates everybody. So one night, fucking, fucking we're off our kicks, fucking nose on drums. <laughs> but, so I'm just singing here, guess what I have for my tea, guess what I have for my tea. It was lasagna! And we're just going off our cake, nose laughing. Quiggy's on bass, nose laughing his tits off. It was lasagna, it was lasagna, lasagna. He's screaming lasagna for ages and I'm flailing about on the fucking drums. No, goes, what's that cheering you for? No, uh, about lasagna? <laughs> no, do, do I know? Went away and wrote, you know, I died the tune. No, goes, I've got this tune, fucking, uh, it's got lasagna in it, could I call it Ziggy's dinner? Go on, son. And he was fucking very, very upset. I think it's the worst song oh, I've ever written. I fucking hate it. With a vengeance. And he wrote one called Noel's Nose or something, didn't he? <laughs> it's childish. You know that song, right? It's bought me many rounds. It's got me drunk in so many places. You know what I mean? Fire! Oh, you're yeah. the guy! Oh, I get that. Oh, that's horrible. But it's funny, and I think Noel describes being around you as opening a box of monkeys. Opening a bag of monkeys, yes. Yeah. <laughs> would you say that's a fair? Would you say that's a fair summation? Uh, well, after seeing after seeing the footage of the documentary, I would say yeah, that's a fair <laughs> account, yeah. Fair play. But um, yeah, I mean that's amazing to get not only one song, like no one else, I think is mentioned once in the song. Yet you're mentioned twice. I mean, is it? What is it? Is it just that you're that special of a person that they they just keep thinking about you? I don't you? know. You'd have to ask Noel that, like, 
Well, I mean, I, I'm going to see Liam in, in Manchester in, a, in a, is it December, is it? Yeah. Um, and I think I'm going to see uh, be, be going to see Nolan in London uh, before that. Oh yeah. But uh, I, I haven't. I've, I've spoke to, I haven't seen Liam for years, but I speak to Noel every now and then on the phone. But it'd be good to see them and catch up again, Mike. Yeah, yeah. And is it? I mean, you've you've spoke to Noel. Is it? Do you think it's genuine? What's going on with him and Liam? Do you think? Because there's there's. Oh room, no, it's genuine. Mate. It's genuine. Yeah, yeah. Do you, yeah, have they li- like that. Have they literally not seen each other since since Paris 2009? Do you think? No, not that. Well, not that. Not that I'm aware of. That they haven't seen each other. But everyone seems to think, oh, this is just a publicity stunt to, to sell records. But they don't need need that anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. I mean, I'm, a bit, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit sad for them really. I wish they would, would just, you know, just forget about it because it, it, it must be hard on the bleeding mum. Yeah. You know, to see the two sons like that fighting it out in in, mm. in the press and stuff. They were, I wish they could grow up like. Yeah. Mind you, saying that I, I hate my brother as well. So, <laughs> you know, who might today uh, give advice? But do you keep calling him a potato for to two million people on Twitter though. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't. I don't uh, tweet. You don't do Twitter, but no. um, mate, you should do. You be. I would definitely. We'd get you a few hundred thousand followers. I, I think if Diggsy was on Twitter, definitely. You think so? Oh man, you'd be brilliant on Twitter. Um, see, see, I don't even have a mobile phone <laughs> or a computer. I, I have to. I, some of, I have to go on Facebook. Yeah, you know, like sort of raise the profile of the sums. This is yeah. like a few years back. But oh, I mean, I said terrible, and I, I just, as I say, I've got a very short attention span, so. <laughs> but, uh, I might, you know what? I might have a think about that, and have a word with Chris Muller. Do it, man. Do it. Get on. Maybe you can set up a Twitter account for for us. Yeah, but even like I think even when Noel was doing um, his like blog a few years ago, he wouldn't he wouldn't even log on and write it. He would just send people like text messages, and then they would then update it for him. So yeah, no, you, I think I think you'd be the, the Twitter format is brilliant because it's only. 140 characters so you can yeah it's just little one or two sentences here and there I think you'd be great on Twitter mate alright shall I have a think about that then James yeah yeah but there you go well if you do that's it I'll I'll get the credit then if you if you get on Twitter that's fantastic I'll send you the shit jokes and you can uh, yeah we'll decide we'll decide if they are shit jokes or not no that's good man so what's um, so what's next are you going to go off and record this album then in the next what next few months yeah yeah Let's be doing it. Hopefully, we're, we're doing. You know, have you heard of the pledge? The pledge thing where. Oh, pledge music, yeah. Yeah, that was, we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to have to try, uh, do that again. Yeah. Um, because we've got most of the songs written anyway. With the fact because the plan was to do three albums. All right. With Lee and because uh, Lee's died and all that, yeah. So we, you know, we have to finish this album in, in memory and in the spirit of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it's called Mustn't Grumble. <laughs> and if anyone can grumble, it's me. Um, it's called Mustn't Grumble. So, and most of the songs are written for that anyway. It's just, it's just getting some money in so we can start recording it. And, yeah. And then crack on with uh, some new stuff with the new guitarist. Actually, yeah. Yeah, as well. Yeah, fair And my me past year's about to uh, come out the oven. All right then, mate. Well, that's, that's a good a time to wrap it up. But, okay, kid. But what's your... um? Do we normally finish the... Uh, I'll edit in an Oasis track to finish with. Is there an Oasis track that particularly means a lot to you, Diggsy? Uh, I would say, basically... Um, I remember playing... Uh, uh, and what's, uh, what's the story, Morning Glory, for the first time in London after it's done... Uh, the Earl's Court and yeah. we went to Knowles the next day and uh, I remember um, he played uh, was it Hel- Hello was it? Yeah, Hello, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember I thought, oh, that only sticks in my head fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he, 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 he was a kid of pulling this out of the air anyway, no, wasn't he? And uh, one of my favourites is Up in the Sky. Up in the Sky, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's what you call it. It's, 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 oh, no, it's paperback writer, isn't it, or something yeah. like that? Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty close, isn't <laughs> but it? But it's a great riff, that. I love that riff. Nice one. All right, mate. Well, we'll end with a bit of up in the sky. But Diggsy, enjoy your pasty, mate. Oh, uh, thanks, James. And enjoy Glasgow, and uh, and try and take it a little bit easy, buddy. Yeah. Right, I won't. <laughs> Diggsy, all the best, pal. All the best, lads. Cheers, mate. Bye. Thank you, bye.